Not only is that car rice, but that spoiler has the opposite effect. It's slowing that car down. Okay, those look like water cannons, but I gotta give it to them. The car does sound pretty good. I'm all for donks, but that is a little outrageous, but not nearly as crazy as any of the mods that you're gonna see on this list today. Oh man, sometimes you see some dumb stuff on the road. Mods that make you embarrassed to even own a car. And hell, maybe some of you guys made these mistakes when you were younger. I know I did, but those days are way behind me. And to save you the potential embarrassment, we're gonna run you through a list of the dumbest mods that you need to avoid at all costs. And I may or may not do a little roasting along the way. It's great to see you guys again. Let's go. Now hold up, real quick, before we get into this video, could you guys do me a huge solid? Go click on the first link in the description and it's to our Facebook page. All you have to do is click like and that's it. We're really trying to build up our Facebook so we can do awesome, dare I say, ideal projects on the channel. Let's go. First on the list is bound to get a lot of comments in the comments section. And the pros of this mod is that it's loud, and the cons of this mod is that it's loud. Yeah, I'm totally guilty of this. My 997 is straight piped and I love it. But before y'all pick me with a pitchfork, let me explain. While it is technically a good mod, because anyone can do it for cheap, and let's not forget you do get a few extra horses from it, it comes at the expense of everyone around you. Piercing eardrums, making poor babies cry, scaring dogs, and Squid's cat. And depending on the car that you amplify by removing the exhaust, it'll likely sound like total shit. <laughs> In fact, I can pretty much guarantee that your Chevy Cobalt is gonna sound worse after a straight pipe. No fart can mufflers or high flow cats are gonna remedy the sound of hopelessness coming from the back end. And it's almost always the most gutless, 1.3 liter, naturally aspirated, ugliest car making the most noise. You know the nerds. Screeching tires at a stoplight, redlining through every single gear, making as much noise as top fuel dragsters while pushing around 30 miles per hour. I like to call this noise pollution and just don't be that guy. Seriously, save the straight pipe for something that we all wanna hear, like this. And something that I'm becoming more of a fan of are V8 turbo diesel trucks. And they sound incredible straight piped, in my honest opinion. A Lamborghini is a status symbol. It screams exotic, rich supercar, and it's different in every single way. It's lower, wider, faster, and louder. And when you pull up to the club and your doors go up and not out, you will grab the attention of anyone within 100 yards. Billionaire doors, as they call them, are the signature of the Italian Bull brand. And the main reason not to get a Lambo with peasant doors, like the ones on the Huracan, is, well, they just don't attract nearly the same amount of attention. But what's a complete eyesore is that when your doors go up Lambo style on your 2010 Camaro, let's just say that you're gonna get people looking but it ain't gonna be the type of attention that you, you want because these knockoff door hinges are never as good as the original. Just watch, because Lamborghini doors are engineered to be rigid, they rise slowly, smoothly, and confidently. The Lambo doors on your local D-Bags Honda Accord? Flimsy, wobbly, creaky. According to YouTube Girlfriend, there's a bunch of good Gucci knockoff bags, but no one's really nailed the Lambo door counterfeit. And despite being tacky and dumb, they're also literally one of the most dangerous mods that you can make to your car. You guys, straight up. That Aventador has pyrotechnics built into the bolts of the door. So if you were ever in a rollover accident and you end up on the roof of your $500,000 supercar, 
an indicator will start flashing on the dash and you can blow the doors off. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is absolutely wild. And it's safe to say that your $600 set of hinges from eBay, they don't have that tech built in. So in the same accident, you are probably SOL and it could even be fatal. But if you're a little bit luckier, maybe your door will just casually fall off your Celica when you're cruising to the local car show. Like this thread titled, my Lambo door just fell off. You seriously can't make this up. So promise me one thing, hold off on the vertical doors at all costs, even on your Corvette. Sorry, Bladed. And once you can afford a car that has them, well, it's all you. Just make sure you take me for a ride. Let's go. Squid is gonna hate me for this one because he loves these things. Downforce is an ingredient that is essential for cornering fast on a racetrack. The new C8 Corvette's wing option generates 400 pounds of force at high speeds. So generating that force with an aftermarket big GT wing is a no brainer, right? Well, not so much. See, the key word here is high speeds. Cars utilizing GT wings properly are running over 100 miles per hour on a closed race course, not inching along the freeway at four miles per hour. So when you slap a big wing on your Subaru WRX that has never seen the racetrack, let alone triple digit speeds, you look more like a 100% certified dork than a GT racing legend. No one, and I mean no one, thinks that your car with a big wang has been aerodynamically tuned in a wind tunnel. Oh, and to add salt to your wound, the giant GT wing will most likely make your car slower since it's adding drag at lower speeds. Now, personally, I kind of love hate big wings. When done right, they can add a sick aggressive look to the car in addition to downforce. Yeah, that's TJ Hunt's 458 GT3, and that thing is sick. Plus they help the car stay planted while carving up apexes at triple digit speeds. So there are some definite use cases for them on the street. But rocking a giant wing as a grocery getter, well, is like wearing a bulletproof vest to a paintball match. Sure, it may help you in some very small way, but you're gonna look stupid. I loved stickers growing up. My locker was covered in everything from the boy bands that I liked, the radio stations that I listened to, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and even SpongeBob. Stickers are a great way of showing pride of ownership, of showing loyalty. They're also a great way of showing that you are desperate for attention. They don't make your car look faster, and they don't make your car look better. They just make you look like you think your car is so cool that everyone needs to know what you've done under the hood. A laundry list of brands slapped all over the rear window doesn't just reek of desperation, it's just plain dangerous and stupid. And what's worse than that? Unbadging. This is just a whole new level of stupid. Unbadging is the practice of replacing your car's badge with a higher trim car's badge, such as replacing a base model 3 series badge with an M3 badge you can pick up on Fleabay for $29.99. Who are you really trying to impress? Your, yourself? Because the people that would be impressed by you driving an M3 are probably other car guys who can see right through your lies or hot chicks that don't even care that it's an M3. At least that's how I found out when I got my M3. No girls cared. And it's just gonna feel utterly shameful when you roll up to a real M3 at a light. That guy is gonna blow the doors off of you. No, your six banger Mustang is not an SRT8. And no, your Prius is not a V8 4x4 turbo diesel TRD. So don't go sneaking out in the dark of the night quietly when no one's looking and just slap a Hellcat badge on your 200-ish horsepower Chrysler product. That thing ain't loud or proud and the only thing that's gonna piss off the taste police more is that, well, if you did the next mod on this list. Hi, hi, hi. Vents and ducting, like wings, are a functional piece of aero that makes sense on competition race cars. They send air to various parts of the car to cool them, like your brakes and your radiator. For example, did you know that Formula One brakes reach the temperature of molten lava? Just a little fact that I learned in Squid's video on F1. Go check it out up here. But if you're not competing in F1, you don't have to cool your engine as you floor it past the mall. Your AutoZone brake pads aren't melting as you sit and stop and go traffic downtown. Now, it's just dumb that car guys put on fake vents 
pretending that it does something. But manufacturers do this all the time as well. Only 38,000. Hey, what are all these holes? These are speed holes to make the car go fast. And this is even with high-end cars. Take the BMW M2, an all-around great sports car, and it's plagued with fake vents. <laughs> yeah, BMW even admitted that there was absolutely no functional need for vents. But hey, they look so cool. So let's just toss them on the M2 and call it a day because hashtag race car. And the thing is, is that it's not even the M2. Cars like the Civic Type R and the new Supra are plagued as well. The point I'm trying to drive home here is that individuals and manufacturers alike are susceptible to poking a bunch of useless holes in their cars, and neither of them are right. Now, I'm definitely guilty of doing some dumb things to my cars, but I can't be the only one. What are some dumb mods that you've done to your rides? Let us know down below. I can't wait to see what the dumbest mod someone has done. And please find your favorite and roast them to no end. Because this was an awesome ideal video to make and I really appreciate you guys being a part of the ideal fam. So check out some other videos on the channel and as always keep living that ideal lifestyle.